Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Cynic Alex, and today I want to talk about the upcoming DC Unchained game by Creative Lab 433. Now, this game has been getting a lot of hype recently because it's an ARPG. It looks to be made in the image of something like Marvel Future Fight, so it's live action, it's not turn-based, and it's got multiple different of the most epic DC heroes and villains like the Joker, Batman, Wonder Woman, Superman, Lex Luthor, and others. A lot of people in the Marvel Future Fight community and a lot of gamers in general are really an, in anticipation hotly for this game because DC has not released a, a decent game in a while. You know, DC Legends has its flaws. DC Online, well, we know what happened with that game. And we're kind of waiting for a new one with Injustice 2 kind of being the only thing that we have available. So for you DC fans, I have done a bit of investigative work in collaboration with an anonymous fan who I thank for emailing me. And I've dug up quite a bit of information surrounding the game. Now, it's currently in a closed beta or it will be in a closed beta very soon for Japan, Taiwan, and Hong Kong. I'm trying to figure out how to get down with that one so I can show you guys actual game play you can hit up some stuff on YouTube that I found from different people uh, some of them have commentary some of them don't but it's all of course not in English yet but I do have some English translations and some uh, images to show you guys so that we can speculate and learn more about the game before it comes out so we can have the most knowledge going forward uh, even before we get our hands on it and get to play so I went over to this website called plug you can find it in the description below I've linked it to you guys and I found quite a lot of information the first one is this uh, image of a uh, kind of area or one of the dungeons or environments in the game is going to be metropolis and as you can see it's quite detailed the artwork I really like um, it's kind of muted in terms of the colors but there's a ton of detail hidden uh, beneath the top layer once you sort of soak it in and look at it but as you can see metropolis is under siege so it's going to be attacked by some villains you can see the daily planet there and it's uh, accompanied by this text that details what Metrop metropolis is it mentions of course superman because that's his hometown it mentions lex luthor which as we will see later on in the video is one of the villains of the game already confirmed we talk about the daily planet already it also mentions star labs we know flash is in the game which is fantastic we can hope for some flash villains like Reverse Flash and Captain Cold and Mirror Master and others. And then it also mentions Strikers Island, which is just off of the kind of coastline or the, the Bay of uh, Metropolis. And of course, that has some of the most dangerous villains and inmates of Metropolis housed there. Some of the inmates, of course, include people like Bloodsport, Kryptonite Man, Lex Luthor, Parasite, Shrapnel, Toy Man, and Ulysses. In addition... So we may be seeing those characters. We may also be seeing some of the characters that appear from Injustice Gods Among Us or the original Injustice game that were at the Strikers Island map and kind of locale for that fighting arena, which were Gorilla Grodd, Captain Cold, uh, Metallo, and Parasite, and Deadshot. Actually, not Captain Cold, Deadshot. I really like Captain Cold, so I want to see him everywhere. So those are some predictions for additional characters that we might see, but the only ones confirmed right now as far as villains that tie into this whole uh, locale are Lex Luthor. So in addition to that location, we did get some additional information. We actually got character details and pages for three upcoming heroes, or two heroes and a villain, for... Um, DC Unchained. The first one as we can see here is Lex Luthor and he's got a combat type that has this kind of weird spiky wheel. His faction is neutral and from what I can understand there are three factions in the game. There's hero, villain, and neutral so that will be interesting to see how those play together. If there's some kind of type advantage or disadvantage when attacking hero to hero or hero to villain and vice versa. And then it gives you a little brief backstory on him. We know who Lex Luthor is. It's pretty straightforward. And then it gives you both his active skills and his passive skills so it's quite interesting he's got five active skills which we've come to know and expect from marvel future fight and those kinds of arpgs but then he also has five passive skills now having read through all of the passive skills i can say that while it does sound like a lot of passive skills especially if you do compare it to future fight where you have one or two um, it's really not that many and once you read through all of them and you start to understand they all seem pretty basic and some of the passives are actually just built into the character based on their type or their faction so you can see here his first passive skill counter speed type tactics he takes less damage from speed type enemies so they're already building kind of a rock paper scissors or maybe a four-way um, damage 
structure to have a weakness and strength kind of advantage disadvantage affinity resistance type meta in the game as you'd come to expect from any kind of rpg type game you can't have characters all dealing the same damage numbers to every enemy you want to have some uh, immediate counterplay uh, involved then you have things like attack power increases if ex is above or at a certain amount so ex appears to be a gauge or a meter that will build up as you do things in the game whether it's killing enemies dealing damage taking damage or other objectives i'm not sure but it appears to be like kind of a super meter and then once that super meter is full maybe you get access to your light later skills like the satellite laser or the evasion protocol or maybe you get to do something else entirely we don't know we'll have to wait and see in addition he has passive skills like he recovers sp and ex if there are many enemies nearby so now we know that there's in, addi in addition to hp and ex there's something called sp so the sp i would guess is mana mana being the primary way of casting skills so we're going to have to deal and kind of uh, monitor and work out uh, casting skills using mana and not just having an unlimited mana pool and just having to worry about skill cooldown. So there's going to be an additional mechanic in the game where you have to kind of uh, plan ahead given how much SP you have, what skills you're going to cast, and it's going to make auto attacks a lot more important, especially in the early game when I'm guessing you don't have a lot of SP to work with. Then we have a couple of other things, and we do have the mention of skill cooldown. Decreases the cooldown of skills upon defeating a certain number of enemies, so we can see a lot of familiar ideas and game mechanics being designed for not only this game, but for this specific character. And then you can read through his skills to understand what he does. He sounds like more of a long-range character with some support abilities, but it will be really cool to see what Lex Luthor does and how he plays in the game. Then we have a, a similar character setup for another one, who is Superman. We got Superman's character page. He's a fist character. I don't know what that means. And then his faction is hero, of course. His active skills are pretty straightforward. He does a bunch of different things. Solar flares sounds a bit interesting, but there is also a video on that website that I'm not going to show in this uh, in this video. But you can check it out if you want to see the actual animations for some of his skills. But they're fairly straightforward. I just want to mention quickly his passive skills. He's got the decreased damage taken from energy types, which makes me feel like a lot of these passives are just kind of standard based on whether the character is of a certain type or another or a certain faction or another and then you have things like increasing attack power after a certain number of hits I'm not clear if that's a certain number of hits that he does or he takes his EX gauge is filled after defeating a certain number of enemies so we can see again the EX playing a big part in terms of their passives it's possible that every single uh, enemy or and hero has that kind of EX uh, influenced uh, passive effect and then we have the mention of both HP and SP as we did with uh, Lex Luthor. So it's pretty cool to see uh, so much depth already developed for characters like Lex Luthor and Superman. In addition to Superman and Lex Luthor, we got one more who is Wonder Woman's hero bio and kind of stats. We don't have Batman in yet yet unfortunately but for uh, Wonder Woman we can see a couple of different mechanics at play here we have a buff on her first skill Athena's blessing which increases her damage her last passive will also trigger that buff effect so we have some counterplay between a skill and the passive uh, when her HP lowers below a certain amount we can see some crowd control abilities with lasso of truth which reels in enemies I'm assuming that's going to pull them in it maybe binds them or snares them or stops them or stuns them for a bit and then we can see some of her other skills like combat skills of the Amazon which she charges forward but then she gets support fire from the Amazon so maybe that's gonna summon Amazons to her we could have you know long-lasting summons or maybe they're just temporary maybe they're untargetable and they just deal damage and then we see things like can tag in for free upon defeating an defeating an elite or boss enemy and this is an interesting thing apparently the tag in feature is going to be a little bit more important in this game than perhaps in other games uh, tag in is when essentially you either call in someone else to uh, assist you or when you want to switch out for someone else it's unclear whether it's a it's a full switch out so swapping Wonder Woman for Superman or another character on your team or if it's more of an assist feature where you continue to use your main hero that you've selected but you call in someone to assist you for it at a certain duration or for a specific kind of attack or combo move so it will be cool to see how that plays into the game and how it adds depth and layers to the system and how it affects the team compositions because that's where it's really going to come into play and where it's really going to matter if you're going to set up your team as all heroes or all villains or a mixture and how those synergies are going to play out and if it's 
going to replace traditional synergy bonuses that just take the form of stats like we see in other games like MCOC, Marvel Future Fight, and other ARPGs of that nature. Uh, then we have some additional uh, pictures that we found, some additional information that uh, kind of sets up characters within the universe and also reveals potentially some other characters that could be coming to this game. So we have the Wonder Woman and Aquaman family tree and it's pretty interesting because we can see actually a lot of different characters from the DC universe coming in. We see Cersei, we see Artemis, we see Cheetah as a, kind of Wonder Woman's main foil, main villain. We see Ares on Aquaman's side, we see Mera, we see Black Manta, we see Siren, and Ocean Master, his brother. So it's really cool to imagine that all of these characters are going to be in the game. You can see from the little icons that these are the same artwork designs and the same art team that's creating the base heroes that we've seen for Wonder Woman, Superman, Batman, Aquaman, Flash, etc. So theoretically, we could be getting all of these characters in the game at one point or another, which is quite cool. In addition, it appears that the DC uh, Unchained design team is interested in these different interplays between not only heroes and villains, but specific heroes and specific enemies, because we know, for example, that Ares and Wonder Woman have a long-standing history, so perhaps there will be some certain or special combat effects or parameters when they specifically face off or team up together in a fight. So it's really cool to see that they're going in and looking at the details in a very specific way and in a very meaningful way. Enemies, family, and those kinds of relationships in addition to romantic relationships. It will be really cool to see how that plays out once the game is out. We also have one for Batman and Superman and we see here we have the Joker confirmed Harley Quinn we have Catwoman who we can see is a neutral character the N stands for neutral so she's neither a villain nor a hero of course Harley Quinn and Joker being villains we have Robin we have Damien Wayne confirmed because he's the son of course we also have Supergirl in addition to Superman and then we also have Doomsday Silver Banshee and of course Lex Luthor so it will be really exciting to see all of these heroes and villains uh, and how this interplay and how this actually matters. It would be a bit disappointing if they went to all this work of creating this artwork and creating these kind of infographics if they weren't going to include any of these kinds of relationships or interplays in the game in some kind of way. Even if it's just a small meaningful bonus buff or debuff effect or kind of uh, negative parameter bonus that makes the fight harder depending on who you're fighting or easier depending on who's on your team, I hope that they do take advantage of it in some way. The last one that we did see was for... Oh no, we didn't see any other ones. Those are the only two that we got. So unfortunately, the well has run dry. I don't have any more information. There are a few videos floating around that you can go and look up about character skills and a bit of gameplay. But until we get a more concrete amount of information, I will have to kind of close things and end things off now. I'll keep you guys updated on Twitter and on other platforms as to how I'm working with uh, the people over at Creative Lab 433 if they're going to let me play the game in advance even though I'm not in Tokyo, Hong Kong or Taiwan. We'll have to wait and see. But let me know what your thoughts are about this game if you're hyped for it or not. Who else you want to see that you haven't already gotten a sneak peek at from this limited information that we got? Subscribe if you want to support me and you enjoy the content. And of course, if you like what you see, I hope to see you again tomorrow. Take care.